Yes, we were uh, discussing the properties of the trees. Now I will ask you some questions about trees. This is our tree example tree. The first one is, which vertex is the root? Can anyone tell me the answer? Not that complicated. So obviously the root is A. The second question is, which vertices are the internal vertices? That's clear. The internal vertices are the ones actually, which are not the leaves. So E is a leaf, element are leaves. So this is an internal one, internal, internal. This is internal, not internal, internal, not internal, internal, internal. So these are the internal vertices, which are not the leaves. So obviously the next question is already answered. The ones which are not circled here are all leaves of the, of the same tree, E element, G, O, P, S, U, R, K, and I are all the leaves of this tree. So yes, tell me the vertices which are children of J. Which vertices are children of J? Any answers? Yes, it's only Q and R. We cannot include S, T, and U. So who is the parent of H? It's obviously C, C is the parent of H. And which vertices are siblings of O? So O is here, so P is the only sibling of O. And then which vertices are the ancestors of M? M is here. Yes, F, B, and A are all ancestors of N. So N and L are siblings. Uh, F, A, B, and A are ancestors of M. You cannot say anything about directly about E, but as child of B, child of one of the ancestors of M. The last one, which vertices are the descendants of B? So we have B here. Which ones are the descendants? Descendants are E, F, L, M, and N. So we have five descendants of B, not A, yes. Any questions, guys, about these simple questions regarding the example shown here? No questions, okay. So now we will see some uh, applications. Where do we use this kind of trees? And the first one is a binary search tree. So a nice implementation of uh, trees. We make use of such binary search trees, especially for uh, finding our values easily. And in such uh, search trees, binary search trees, what we have, we need to have a kind of a comparable key for each node. We need to have a kind of comparison at each node. And then depending on the result of this comparison, we will put our next values into the left child or right child. So here in the binary search tree, the simple uh, idea is that if the restriction is satisfied, if the key is larger than, uh, if the given node is larger than the key, then it should be in the left subtree uh, and the 
if the given value is smaller than the key, then the values should be on the right subtree. But is that a must? You may have different, let's say, rules. Depending on your given rule, you may lay out all the values in your binary search tree. So now we are going to actually uh, form a binary search tree from the words. And the words are some science names like mathematics, physics, geography, zoology. And we will be using an alphabetical order. So this is how we construct the binary search tree. Uh, we are assuming that the mathematics is the root of the tree. So that's why we start with it. And then the next one is physics. So we will check whether physics comes after mathematics or before mathematics in the alphabetical order. And obviously, it comes after mathematics. So we should be putting it on the right. And then we have the third one, geography. And we will be starting from the root. And the mathematics is at the root. So obviously, it's smaller than mathematics. And that's why it should be on the left hand side, left uh, sub tree. And then comes the zoology. Zoology is higher than mathematics. So we should continue on the right hand side. And it's also higher than physics, so it should be on the right subtree. And then meteorology is higher than math, but smaller than physics. So that's why we put it on the left-hand side, left subtree of the physics. And then comes geology. It's obviously uh, less than mathematics. So we are continuing with the left subtree and we are checking it with the geography. And you see that it's larger than geography. So we should put it on the right hand side. That's here. And then we have psychology. Let's do the same approach. It's larger than math and larger than physics, but it's less than zoology. So we should be putting it on the left subtree. So psychology is on the left subtree here, and it's the bottom most level. And lastly, we have chemistry. Chemistry is less than mathematics, it's less than geography. So that's why we will be putting it on the left subtree of geography. Now we are done with it. And this is our uh, binary search tree. So we can easily find uh, any given, let's say, if you are searching, let's say, for zoology, what you're going to do, you will start from the root. You see that mathematics, and you know that you are looking for zoology, so you should be continuing with the right-hand side. And you come up with physics, and you know that zoology is higher than physics, so you should, again, continue with the right-hand side, right subtree. And once you check the next item, you see that zoology is the root of that tree. So you should stop at this point and say that the values in the given binary search tree, and you can easily return its level and other, let's say, information to the user. So this is how we use the binary search trees in our search algorithms. Any questions, guys, about the binary search trees? You can use it for various purposes. This is the implementation, the actually pseudocode, not a um, uh, Python implementation. This is the pseudocode. So we do some assignments, the root of the tree, and then uh, this is actually about the insertion methods. So we have the tree. Uh, this is tree, and we know that v, v is the root of that tree. And then the new item is called as x, and we are trying to locate this new item. This is what we do. We check the root. It's not that uh, it's not empty, or it's not equal to the given item. 
then what we do, we check whether the given value is less than the root or higher than the root. If it's less than, then we do some operations on the left-hand side. If it's higher than the root, we do operations on the right-hand side. And we continue it until we find the exact position for the new item. There's another uh, example. You may also use it for decision trees. Instead of binary search tree, we may make use of trees to decide on anything. For instance, here we are comparing A and B together. If A is larger, we continue with the left subtree. If B is larger, we continue with the right subtree. And then what we do, we have another item, C. So this is what we are doing here. We are comparing C with A value first, and then comparing with uh, B. But on the right-hand side, we should compare uh, B first with C, and then later with A. So if you do these operations, then at the end, at the leaves, as you see, you, there are different variations. For instance, here, A is the largest item, then comes B and C. And we have such, let's say, variations of the comparison between three values, A, B, and C. And then depending on this leaf, the condition on the leaf, you may perform, let's say, various tasks. Depending if you come up with a solution, then you may perform many other uh, statements and maybe jump to a different function, depending on this expression here. Any questions, guys? This is another implementation. Uh, we said it at the beginning, you can use compression algorithms. Uh, you can use trees in the implementation of compression algorithms. This is one of the famous compression algorithms, the Hoffman coding. And this is how the coding is performed. So what is done here? Let's say you have an kind of a text file and these are the characters and this is the probability of the characters. So A has the highest probability in about 40% of the characters in the text file, we come up with the letter A. And but for about 1% of the time, we see the letter L or S, but A has the highest probability. So what Hoffman says is that the highest, uh, the characters or the uh, items having the highest probability should be represented with the lowest amount of codes. So here you see on the rightmost column, A will be represented with zero, M will be represented with one and zero. So you see that the highest, uh, the letters the, or the characters having the highest probabilities are represented with lowest number of, let's say, uh, binary values. A is simply represented with zero and M is represented with one and zero. But if the probability is decreased, as you see here, uh, they are represented with many uh, digits. The last one and the previous one, SNL are represented with six digits, six number of uh, ones or five ones and then zero. If that's it, then you'll see that it, it's uh, referring to a character as, if you see six ones after each other, then you will see that it is L. Now let me try to write my name here. For you, I will write hmm, four ones and then zero. For L, I will directly continue six number of ones. And then for I, for A, I will simply use a zero here. And then for S, I will use five number of ones and zero. So this is representing actually my name. And if I use the conventional way, uh, for each character, I need to use a byte, which means that I need to use eight bits 
for a letter, if you multiply it with four, I need to use 32 bits to actually write my name. But if I use an Hoffman coding, how many bits did I use for five, 11, 12, 17, and 18? So by using 18 bits instead of 32 bits is a good thing. So I did a kind of a compression while writing my name. So how I'm going to do the decoding? Since I know from the tree that uh, the maximum size of actually, the, let's say blocks should be six bits, right? But the thing is that I will stop when I see an zero. So I'm scanning from left to right and I'm scanning no zeros. Yes, one zero here. So I will stop here and say that this is uh, equal to U if I check my dictionary. And then I continue. I come to this point and didn't come up with a zero. So I should stop since the maximum size of my block is six. And if I again check my dictionary, I see that this is equal to L. And then what I do, I continue with another block, but this is zero. So I should directly start a stop. I shouldn't continue with uh, other values. That's it, we have a single digit here and zero is referring to the letter A. And then I do one more scanning operation. I see a zero, I should stop. So what is it referring to? If I check my dictionary, it's referring to S here. So I stop with my scanning and I can I say that this compressed uh, value is equal to my name. So as you see, instead of using 32 bits, I use 18 bits. This is my compression performance, 18 by 32. But the thing is that I didn't discuss how I construct this tree. Uh, after you have all these probabilities and if you order them from the highest value to the lowest value, what you do, you start from the root. This is our root of the tree. And then I have two probabilities here. The highest probability, 0.38, and then the remaining is equal to 62, right? So I will just uh, give a zero value here, and then I will continue working on the rest of the probabilities. And then I will divide the 62 by again, uh, two portions. The left one will be uh, the probability having the highest value is 0, 32 and the rest is equal to 0, 30 and here is equal to 19 and I will always give a digit 0 to the left hand side and 1 to the right hand side so the remaining is 11 I have 0, 07 and then I should have if you subtract these two we should have 0, 04 here 0, 0.2 and I have again 0, 02 here. So I continue it until I don't have any to the value left. So this is how I construct the tree. And then uh, if you want to, let's say, represent y, then what I do, I do a kind of a traversal from here, 0, 1, or I, I think I, uh, I will start right from the tree. So one, 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 and zero. It will represent the letter Y. I'm not starting from the root, but just starting from children of the root. Since we don't have any uh, zero or one assigned to the root, we have these assignments to the children of the root. So that's why I start from here, one, 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 and zero, 
this represents y and the others for instance for n i will be counting one one zero and for the l as you see i will be following this path and have six ones at the end of this representation any questions guys about the usage of uh trees and compression algorithms so there are many ways many problems actually we can make use of these trees and if you remember at the last step i have done kind of an traversal i visited some of the nodes and this is a very nice property of trees actually by visiting these uh, nodes in a, some kind of an uh, decide, uh, defined manner, you, you can obtain, you can grab many information from these trees. So we need to have some kind of uh, procedures for visiting sometimes all the vertices or sometimes some specific vertices, like in the Hoffman coding, we didn't visit all the tree, uh, all the nodes, but just visited some of the specific ones while calling some letters. And these are called as traversal algorithms. If you are visiting the vertices in a defined manner, defined fashion, and we have the pre-order traversal, sometimes in-order traversal or post-order traversal. We will be discussing these traverses. They are highly important and we will have some examples regarding these. Uh, the first one is called the pre-order traversal. And let's have a look at the definition. We will have an uh, ordered rooted tree. This is called as T. And we are assuming that this tree has a root called R. And if T has just an R, then obviously we can say that uh, R is the pre-order traversal of T. If actually this is what is referring to this part. is simply referring to a tree with a single node. And obviously this node is uh, the root of the tree, obviously. And we have a single node, so we can easily say that the root itself is the pre-order traversal of t. But what happens if you have some children of it? This comes here. If you have more node in your tree, the thing is that uh, we will have such uh, subtrees. Assume that this is t1. I will make this one t2. T3, and we may have many of them up to let's say Tn. These are all subtrees of R, and they are ordered from left to right. So that's why I start writing one from the left and then continue to the right. So our pre orders, the pre order traversal will start from the the top start from the R. So our first value will be in our example, if you see here, it will be A. So in this pre-order traversal, we will be visiting the uh, root first, and then it will be continuing with uh, traversing the first, uh, let's say subtree T1. So what is our first subtree here? B. And then we will be continuing with T2. Let's say, assume that uh, I'm not going to consider the rest right now. Assume that we just have this part. So I have visited the root first, which is A in our example, and then I will be visiting T1, which is B in our example, and then T2 until I cover all the subtrees, B, C, and D. So this will be the pre-order traversal of the given tree. 
And as I said, I simplified this tree into such a form. And this is the pre-order traversal of the given tree. So if one says that, please uh, do a pre-order traversal on the given tree, this should be the visiting order of all the nodes. You should first visit the root, which is A, and then the subtrees from starting from left and going to right, A, B, C, and D. Now I would like to uh, continue with the whole example here. Now we are going to, to find the uh, pre-order traversal of this rooted tree. Uh, this is a bit complicated. So this is how we proceed. And we said that we should always start with the root A and then continue with the uh, left children. A, that's why actually we continue with B, E, and J. But after we have written all the leftmost subtrees, and then you need to switch to the right subtree or the subtree at the same level with J here. And then we should have that's why K here. And then we need to have the children of K starting from left to right. So that's why we continue it N and O, P. But after that, these are all visited. We need to go back, go back here. And I see that F was not visited since this is a pre-order traversal. We have already visited this portion here, but not F. And that's why after P, we should have F, as you see here. And then what comes after F is that we had already visited the root. So we need to visit the siblings of B. The siblings of B is C here. So C should come right after F. I check it and as you see, C is coming right after F. And then after C, I should continue with D. Yes, it's D here. Since D is the root of the nodes underneath, again, we should use the pre-order traversal and I should continue with the left, left subtree, G and L and then M, G, L, M and then continue with the siblings of G. Since G is already visited, I don't need to write it again. I should continue with H and I. As you see, if you write H and I, then you should be done with this pre-order traversal. 